Hello and welcome to We Random episode 70. We Random is a podcast where we talk about, believe it or not, random things. Brian's going to tell you a little bit more about that. But before we do that, hey, Brian, do you know why a leopard cannot hide? Why? It's because he's always spotted. We'll be right back after this. Almost Qualified Productions. We're three beers in. Time for you to catch up. Hey, yo. Welcome to We Random, episode 70. I'm Landmark. That's Skanzi. Say hello to the people, Skanzi. What's up, everybody? If you know, you know why I started the open with the hey yo. But we are here today to welcome you all back to We Random. This is the podcast where we get angry online. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that little wheel in the middle of this view that you see on YouTube. It's going to spin. A topic's going to come up. We're going to talk about it. We might be mad. We might be sad. Who knows? You're going to find out just as soon as we are. But before we do that, I would like to talk to you, Skanzi, about our positive point for the week. All right. What do you got, man? So it sounds like it's been quite the week for both of us. So I wanted to bring you something where you, if you'd like to use the telephone like the old men that we are, can get a pep talk from a kindergartner. So Pep Talk is a project from students of West Said Elementary, a small school in the town of Hillsburg, California. If you call a number, which I'll ask you if I can read this or not, or if that's going to cause a problem, no, you will you receive a Go Pep Talk from a kindergartner. That number is 707-998-8410. You call this number, you hear a recording. If you're feeling mad, frustrated, or nervous, you can press 1. If you need words of encouragement and life advice, you can press 2. If you need a pep talk from kindergartners, you can press 3. If you want to hear kids laughing with delight, you can press 4. And if you need encouragement in Spanish, you can press 5. So I thought that this was kind of like a really cool thing. Like when I heard about it, I actually heard about it at work. And like I called it, and it was like cute and like fun. And I thought that for all of you, our loyal listeners and our loyal viewers i know that we all need to pick me up sometime so if listening to kids shout in delight is fun for you or if listening to kids tell you that you got it this is the line for you yeah dude i think it's uh i think it's very cool i uh you know i normally when i'm when i'm sharing telephone numbers for people to call i normally share call and notes if you're not familiar with call and notes it's a phone number you can call and they play Hall and Oates music for you. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. That's amazing. I had yeah. not heard of that. So I'll, I'll put, I'll so put the number in the chat online, there. So there you go. After we get mad online, we might have to call this number and get a little pep talk. But before we move to getting mad online, how are you doing, Scott? Do you have any words of wisdom or wonders for our loyal listeners and viewers tonight? Nope, not tonight. I got nothing. All right. Well, tonight... We are going to spin that wheel. As you can see, we got lots of topics. So let's go ahead and give this the spin a rooney and see what happens. It is spin a rooneying. And I think we're going to talk about Calvin Ridley because it seems to me like Calvin Ridley is a, an individual who makes some very wise personal decisions in his life. And we should all learn from Calvin Ridley and all of his smart decisions. Tell us about Calvin hey, Ridley. Hey, did Brian. you know that? Did you know that you could win Terry Bradshaw's money, Sconzi? Did you know that? Did you know that if you call 1-800-REDLINE in Tennessee, you can gamble for what? I, no, anyway. So, Calvin Ridley, why are we talking about this? The National Football League has suspended Atlanta Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley for at least the 2022 season for betting on NFL games while he was away from the Atlanta Falcons during the 2021 season. The league said Ridley... Bet during a five-day period where Ridley says that he bet 
I think he said it was $1,500. And he was not with the team, nor did he have any insider trading knowledge that would have compromised a game in any way. So, basically, like, in... There's letter of the law. I'm sure somewhere in the contract is like you cannot bet on the sport that you are playing. But also, the NFL is in bed with daily fantasy. Like, like they are BFFs. Like, we're getting more commercials for daily fantasy at these times than we're getting for Coca-Cola. Well, and it's not even just daily fantasy. It's like flat out sports betting. Like, right. Every single commercial break in an NFL game has at least two commercials. For daily fantasy or, you know, straight up sports betting. So, and and we, you know, everybody knew this was going to happen as soon as they opened the gates. Like, it, it's just, they just jumped in full bore. I don't know if they're getting some kind of kickback off this or if it's just the casinos going crazy buying a bad ad time. But, uh, yeah, like, this, this whole thing is dumb, though. Like, everybody who is anybody who has ever pretended to ever want to play a sport in the history of sports ever existing knows you can't bet on your sport like everybody knows this and you know there's nothing nothing specific on calvin ridley i don't know this guy uh clearly our 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 our, our smartest and brightest people don't generally go into professional sports but still like how many people are in this person's life that you don't you can't you just write this run this by somebody like you pay an agent how many hundreds of thousands of dollars just say yo bob can I bet on NFL games? And Bob says, no, Calvin, you a dummy. You can't bet on NFL games. Okay, Bob, I'm not going to do it. So how hard is that? Like, well, come on, so dude. So here's, here's the messed up part, right? Calvin Ridley, the time that he bet, he had stepped away from the team due to his own mental health concerns. So, like, Well, clearly he's got another kind of year to work on part. it, apparently. <laughs> Right. But like that that's the messed up part. Like you said, like there was obviously poor communication and he made a poor decision and now it's just going to compound upon himself. Yeah, it's 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 stupid. Like everybody knows you can't bet on sports, right? Like everybody knows that you can't you can't bet on your sport. And the fact that he bet on his own team on top of it is is stupid. Like one of the best baseball players in history is not in the Hall of Fame because he bet on his fucking team, right? Like it, yep. you know you can't do that it's 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 just dumb i i think i think the point that brian was kind of getting at is is some of the duality there right it's like we are going to advertise through the teeth to absolutely everybody who has a heartbeat i don't care if you're 12 and a half months old we want you to gamble we want you to bet on football if you bet five dollars you're going to win two hundred dollars mr toddler with the, you know the colic that can't get any sleep and your parents hate you a little bit right now but you know but 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 you can't do that if you're if you're a pro athlete. That's different. I don't know. It's yeah. just well, stupid. Let's spin the wheel. And see, see, we didn't get too mad. We were just kind of like snarky. Yeah, it's just it's kind of dumb. Fifteen hundred dollars cost him eleven million dollars. That's harsh. That's a that's a rough lesson to learn. Let me tell you. Uh, so speaking of, uh, I don't know if this is a harsh lesson to learn, but uh, apparently there is a very big. Dr. Dre fan on the Cincinnati Bengals team, B. What can you tell uh -oh. us about that? All right. Well, Bengals place kicker Evan McPherson stayed on the field during the superb Owl halftime show to watch the performance. McPherson did not join his Cincinnati Bengals teammates in the locker room at halftime. Some felt that it wasn't a big deal considering that he's the place kicker. Others, including Bengals special teams coordinator Darren Simmons, called McPherson's actions a sore subject. Not just a sore subject. But a real sore <laughs> subject. So this is kind of like a very like low hanging fruit article. Like, yeah, like he should have been in a locker room with his team and blah, 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 blah. And like we're upset. Of, like this is like the equivalent to when we talk about like, well, why weren't you at the 830 meeting? Like, <laughs> did I need to be at the 830 meeting? I'm not part of this team. Why do I got to be at the 830 meeting? Can you just send me the email? Like, I'm the place kicker. I have one job. Like, it's not like you're going to run a flea flicker for me. <laughs> That's fair. I, first of all, I want to clarify for anybody who is not hip on the internet lingo that Brian likes to use sometimes, because God knows I'm not. 
Uh, Superb Owl is is a, a weird way of saying Super Bowl. So this was Super Bowl during That's the Super true. Bowl, the biggest, most important game of of you know people's lives, their careers. And this guy decided, I'm not going to hang out with the team. I'm going to sit out there and watch this concert, which I kind of get because there's a lot of big names in this concert. But I also think that it was kind of garbage for what it ended up being. My personal opinion, I didn't yeah. think it was that great. I still think Bruce Springsteen's number one all time. But besides the fact, like this, it's still a team sport. And and yes, special teams players are generally kind of ostracized, right? They're kind of the, the, the butt of the team and they, they jokes and all that and whatever. But it's still a team sport, right? So yeah. in this case, I, I agree with the fact that he shouldn't have been out there watching the halftime show. Like, yeah, that's, just, that's just not it's where you should be. It's a freaking Super Bowl, man. Like, come on. So, so our first two stories are letter of the law. You shouldn't have done what you did. Yeah, and, and you're kind of <laughs> dumb because you did. I'll say it. Someone had to say it. I'll say it. Now this is a good story. Sure what I said. Let's talk. Let's talk about sports bras, B. I like sports bras when ladies wear this. Oh no, that's not what we mean. We're talking about something different. <laughs> what is the? What's the sports bra? Uh, Explain. Are you telling me anyway? I'm not gonna. We're, we we got we got to stay focused. So, a women's sports bar named the sports bra will be opening in portland this spring jenny nguyen the bar owner says 40 percent of athletes are women while 96 percent of all athletes on tv are men that means that generally four percent of televised sports are women's sports Nguyen has aspirations to advance the cause for women locally and globally. Locally, showing these games in the tap room is one area, but also wanting to source local food and beverages from as many women-owned businesses as possible. Globally, she wants to change the perception that women's sports can't make money and wants to encourage young women who might quit doing something they love because they don't see a path forward. So I saw this. It was So the funny part about this is, this was 100% like a Twitter rabbit hole that I saw this. <laughs> so there was a Brewers post about Garrett Mitchell and Garrett Mitchell's girlfriend played on the Oregon softball team. So I was like looking at her Twitter and like she retweeted this and I was like, oh, yeah. this is interesting. But like, I think that this is really cool, right? Because it's a very fair point that whenever you go to a bar, like I don't really ever see women's sports on. I might see like bowling in the corner or like, you know, bull riding or some random right. other men's sport. But it's not like you see, you know, Tennessee or you know connecticut's women's teams out there unless it's literally like the you know championship game in the ncaa tournament yeah no i think this is a really cool idea i think i think that uh like i don't watch women's sports i just don't i i i don't know that there's really a reason why i guess most women's sports aren't really sports that i watch even men's version of like i think basketball is probably one of the biggest ones i watch women's soccer um but I think it's cool, the idea that they're going to have all women's sports up. And, and you know what? A lot of times when people are going to a bar, they're not sitting there to watch sports anyway, right? They're, that's not what they're there for. They're to drink and have a good time. But but there's times when you're spaced out. There's times where the two people that you came with are having their own conversation and you're just over here, you know, third wheeling it. And maybe you glance up and watch some of the game or whatever the case may be. I Last week, we didn't have a podcast because I went out to dinner for my birthday and while we were there, they had sports on the on the TV. And I promise you, I watched more of a fucking Blackhawks game that night than I have ever in my entire life. And it's not that I enjoy hockey all that much. I'm certainly not a Blackhawks fan, but it was there. And, you know, it, and, and, and now the article that I have up is showing NHL highlights. I think it's, I don't know what's going on there. But I, I think it's well, a cool it's idea. It's listening. It is. It is. It's Facebook. Um, but no, I think it's a really cool idea. I think it's, I think it's a cool idea to bring awareness to that. Um, I love the fact that she's, she's taking this to the next level and she's really resourcing ingredients and equipment and all of that stuff from women owned businesses. I, I think it's a cool idea. I mean, why the hell not? Yeah. So, you know, I, I hope that it succeeds and then maybe there are other places that will give it a try because there's definitely a market for women's sports out there. Obviously, you know, I know a lot, especially with the NCAA, there's a lot of good, 
you know, competition in softball and baseball and all the other, you know, basketball, like the collegiate yeah. sports, especially even we had the, we had the story about wrestling a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. Like, like if you're going to show men's wrestling, why don't you show women's wrestling? Well, let's just be honest. Guys are, are assholes for the most part. Right. And I, I think there's yeah. probably a lot of women who would love to be able to go out and not have to deal with asshole guys. And I'm not saying that there won't be guys that go to this bar, but I'm guessing that it may be a clientele that leans itself more towards women. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a safer environment. Maybe it's an environment that they it want be to be in, space. right? Like it, it might be a place where people, yeah. where, where women want to go because they're, they're not dealing with the same types of people that they, they, they are at other places. So yeah, I think it's cool. Awesome. Well, see, we're we're not getting too mad yet. I, I I'm a little afraid, but we're do we're doing the best that we can. I'm gonna say this is all on my my trying not to get angry. And now we're gonna talk about iOS 15.4. And the odd thing is, I'm pretty sure I didn't even put the story in the run sheet. No, you definitely did because I did not. But oh, unless you know, someone else did. But Apple iOS 15.4 will bring air tag anti-stalking messages and direct iPhone contactless payments. But those aren't the top features that people are talking about. The iOS 15.4 beta includes a less gendered Siri voice option for English speakers. The voice, recorded by a member of the LGBTQ community, was meant to increase the diversity of Apple's assistant, giving users more choices for a voice that speaks to them, Apple said in a statement. Meanwhile, Tucker Carlson, I don't even know what he said, and I don't care. As The Rock once said, it doesn't matter. So, Skanzi, what are your thoughts? It on doesn't this? matter what you think. I got you covered. Um, yeah, I'm guessing if I added this, it's because of the uh, the non-gendered voice option. But uh, just just to just to cover all the bases, the anti-stalking messages are good. I, I don't know that it's going to make a whole lot of difference, but there's been some concern about the fact that people can buy these air tags, and then when they meet some woman at the bar that that isn't the sports bra they slip that into their purse or something and now they can track where a woman's at that's obviously one gendered scenario but i think we can all agree that that's probably one of the higher up ones that that happens um so it's a message that's basically telling people don't do that shit and we can hunt you down and we will get the police after you blah 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 which they have actually done um the contactless payments is kind of cool i mean we've already got um, like Apple Pay, which I think is pretty much what this is using, but it allows, like right now, if you want to do a tap to pay kind of thing, you know, a, a, a vendor has to have some sort of equipment, like a dongle or a, a machine or something. And this is just going to make it where you can just tap your phone and be done. You know, for instance, my barber uses a dongle in her phone. Well, if she has an iPhone, which I don't know if she does, I can just tap her phone, give her the money and walk out the door, which is kind of cool. But yeah, the big one is clearly the, uh, they call it a less gendered Siri voice, but really what it is is a voice that's that's kind of in the non-binary, not not as gendered. And uh, why the hell not, right? We talk a lot about yeah. representation. Like we just talked about it with the sports bra, right? Representation is super, super important. And uh, why not have a voice that's, that's non-gendered? I, I think it makes yeah. perfect sense. And of course, Tucker Carlson, if he did say something, stuck his foot up his mouth because that's what he does because he's an asshole. I may not want to swear as much, but he deserves an asshole every single time. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's a really cool idea. I love this idea. Awesome. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're on a good streak. Let's see what we can get now. We, we don't have a whole man. lot of hard hitting oh. stories. I don't think this week. I think that's part of the problem. We don't like, I try, I tried not to select things that would make us angry. Well, let's talk about Rob like Manfred it. then. Hey, so are we talking about this giant MLB? Yes, so, yes, all the MLB stuff. So we are going to get into a very all-encompassing conversation about Major League Baseball and these hometown Milwaukee Brewers. So the MLB Owners and Players Association have agreed to a deal to begin the 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2022 MLB season. You can keep talking. They can hear you, B. You don't got to just stop talking. Cool. The MLB season will begin on April 7th. The uh, big changes this year 
are that the Universal DH has come to the National League, so there will be no more pitchers hitting. There will be no more strategy. But in 2023, we might see the bigger changes. So some of the bigger changes include an enhanced pitch clock, larger bases, and a ban on defensive shifting. So basically... I wanted to kind of turn this conversation into like a general check-in on MLB, where we're at, what we're thinking, and then we can talk about the Brewers signing another veteran at the end of his career, hoping that they can squeeze one more good year out of a guy whose advanced metrics are rapidly declining. But where do you want to start with this, Gonzi? What, what, what does your heart say about baseball right now? The first thing that my mind went to is anybody who is a friend of the show knows that, that there's a there's a number, there's a specific number that, that we hold very dear in our hearts. And that is- Is it num- very nice? That is the number six, number six. I'm thinking that I might have to replace the number six with the number 220, because apparently that's all the fucking brewers do is sign dudes who hit 220. But you know, that's, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, as far as the, the changes, uh, so the, the universal DH, we knew that was going to come. I think it's probably a good thing, honestly. I mean, I don't hate it. I like the strategy that comes with having a pitcher have to hit. You know, you, you're, yep. you're, you know, are you pinch hitting? Are you letting them hit? Are they just going to sacrifice? Do you do the whole double switch? You know, there's so many different things that go into that. And when you have pitchers that can hit a little bit, it's even more exciting. So um, I, I like that, and I'm going to miss that. But I don't have a big issue with the universal DH. I know that part of the problem that MLB has is retaining people's interests. And let's be honest, the pitcher spot is generally a hole in the lineup. So I think that's good. I think it also is going to help some of those players who can hit but not do much of anything else. Nelson Cruz, for instance, who has been rumored to maybe be a Brewer's interest. Um, you know, he people like that. With the Nationals. Oh, great. So I think it gives players like that a little bit of extra longevity, which I'm fine with. Um, I don't know what the enhanced pitch clock is. I haven't read into that. I don't know that it matters. Larger bases, I think, is okay. I don't really care. It might make it a little bit safer, which I'm good with. The defensive shift ban bothers me. I I, I think that this, and, and I, I take it personally. I think that's why it bothers me is because I take it very personally because the Brewers use the shift as much, if not more, than any other team in baseball. Uh, they do that in a lot of ways because that helps them mitigate the fact that they, are, they aren't able to go out and spend, you know, the extra $100, $200 million that the Dodgers and the Yankees and whoever else are able to spend. And so to me, this feels very, very personal as a way of, A, causing more offense, but B, it hurts the the smaller market teams. Um, so again, to me, I see this as just continuing to to lift up those large market teams to the point where in 10 years, the MLB is going to have fucking eight teams. It's going to be stupid. So that's kind of where I'm at on these changes. I mean, that makes sense. Like, I just think it's kind of funny that MLB's whole thing is we need to get the pace of play going and we need to make games shorter. But hey, here comes the DH. Here comes bigger bases. Oh, you can't shift now. So these guys who are hitting 210 because they're hitting into the shift and they're not going to lay down the bunt. Now they're going to hit 230 again, and there's going to be more offense, and games are now going to be three and a half hours long on average, and then every pitcher is going to have an ERA of four and a quarter, and then the bad pitchers are going to have an ERA of six. Like, yeah. you know, MLB is just like they're what they're saying they want and how they're getting there. To me, it doesn't add up. But yeah, and we know, had this I, we had this I'm conversation open. last week when we hung out, right? And and I think yep, exactly. you know, like like my what I think it is, I think MLB is looking at two issues that they have. They got a lot of issues, but they're looking at two of them. The pay the the, the game is boring as shit for for people, especially for people who don't really like baseball, right? Like a casual fan, it's boring. They don't like it, and the games take way 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 too long. So they're trying to work on both of those. Like the pitch clock is starting to try to help that. But I think what they're doing is they're adding a whole lot more to the offensive side. And to B's point, well, if you have more offense, that means it's going to take longer for the game to finish up. And I think that MLB is just looking at the fact that they may have shortened the game as much as they can. So if that's the best we can do, well, let's just punch it up with a whole bunch of offense. And hopefully, even though the game's going to be three and a half hours long, 
maybe people will enjoy it so much they won't mind. Like NFL games can take just as long as an MLB game, probably even longer, but people are engaged throughout the whole thing because there's always action and something going on. Unless, you know, it's anybody playing the Bears and the game's over by halftime. So I think what they're really hoping for is that um, the game will be exciting enough that people won't really care that it takes as long as it does. Yeah, I don't I know mean, if that's I right. That's fair, but we, I don't know if it's right, but so, I think that's what they're doing. Yeah. So let's let's chat about the Brewers here. So our Brewers are – they brought back Brad Boxberger as a relief pitcher, and they signed Andrew McCutcheon. I was honestly surprised at how many people were, like, falling over themselves over Andrew McCutcheon. Now, what I will say is if you look at that time, I think it was, like, 2012 to, like, 2015 or something, dude was insane. But – like, if we're looking at his advanced metrics now, like, what you're seeing is his bat slowing down. Like, he's striking out more. Like, this is the prototypical Brewers going to sign a guy at the end of his career, see if we can squeeze one more year out of him. But, 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 do you know what's really sad, Skamzi? What's that? If you take his stats from last year and you put him on that 2021 team, he's probably a top four five batter on that team easily which says something because as a reminder 220 that's what he hit 220 <laughs> 220 i could probably hit 220 like it's disgusting now i understand he's not going to be a full-time player i understand that uh, you know he's gonna platoon he hits lefties better than he does righties whatever he's still another 220 hitter and let's not forget what was it that really destroyed the Brewers in the playoffs last year? They couldn't get a goddamn hit. So you know what we should do? Sign a guy who doesn't hit. Perfect idea. I love it. And while you were going on that rant, I was just writing in our sheet clip 220. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Hopefully he's be- hopefully he turns out to be better. I, I just, I know that I'm very, very, focused on on what somebody hits because i think that's more important than what it gets credit for but uh like if you can't hit the ball you're not going to win and the, and we saw that in the playoffs last year that's just frustrating cool let's spin it all right i already deleted the 220 i put on the screen but it was kind of funny for a second um that was funny so apparently if you go to taco bell you get cheap gas but if you go to a fancy place you get ex- I don't think that's what expensive gas means. But what's expensive gas all about, B? So, the backdrop of global and domestic inflation in the United States was already worrying. Now, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the global reaction to it stand to make the situation worse, including sending gas prices soaring. So, basically... um, I I have lots of bullet points here, but I think we can just have a more informal conversation, right? A lot of people are feeling the squeeze at the gas pump right now. But we're also seeing that, you know, oil prices went up, but now they're coming down. But you know what's not going down, Skonzi? Price of gas. So this is one of those situations where, in some ways, gas is being used as a political ploy in some ways to like blame administration say oh you need to do more about this but then we can see also that if barrel prices are going down but gas is still going up there's some type of inequities in this market like i just wanted to get your thoughts on all of this and kind of see where you're at on this because obviously you know we're not we're not getting out as much as we used to and that's probably yeah. you know not a bad thing considering how our world has been for the last two years but how are you feeling about these gas prices Scott? you know i'm going to uh i'm going to share an exchange exchange that you and i had uh via text message uh, today yesterday sometime and oh, uh, i think i think this is going to sum it up so brian sends me a tweet sure. and the tweet says the price of oil dropped 20 percent over the last seven days price of gasoline went up and my response to Brian on that tweet was, oddly, the oil, oil company profits are up 20% over the last seven days. Because frankly, that's what's happening. The oil companies are, re- they're all having record profits. It's the same garbage we've talked about before with you know inflation. All these companies are showing record profits and all the working class people, the people that have to buy the gas and buy the groceries and buy the whatever the hell Walmart sells, we're all paying out the nose for stuff 
And it's, it has nothing to do with inflation. It has nothing to do with cost of goods. It has to do with companies raking us over the coals to get money. And that's what the oil companies are doing. Now, there is a delay between the price of oil and the price of gas from what I have read. So I'm not super surprised that the price of gas hasn't gone down right away. Um, generally, there's like a three, four day lax. Um, also, su not surprisingly, it tends to change a lot quicker when the price goes up versus when it goes down. So, you know, you would imagine that within, you know, within the next week, gas prices are going to come down. But again, the, the point of it is, is we're in a situation where uh, prices of everything is going up. And just to make this about work again, the price of what we're getting paid isn't. Like I, the number of people who probably got a raise that equals the inflation rate is probably very, very, very close to zero. I know yeah, I'm not helping that. I, I'm not helping that hall. percentage go up. I know that. I know that. Yeah. yeah, we literally just had a town hall where that question was asked today. Yeah. And the answer, as I sent to you, was the uh, Chris Farley, no idea. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that's, that's what irritates right. me, right? Is it's just, it's just another example of the rich getting richer and everybody else kind of paying the price, which is very irritating. Well, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that we haven't done in weeks. Oh, Scotty. boy. Oh, boy. I wish I had I'm some dramatic. I'm my challenge flag. Oh, okay. All right. I'm throwing my challenge flag because I don't know how close we're getting to time. We're probably still good, but I want to make sure that we have a lot enough time for this topic so that when we're done with it, like if we have more time, we can do something else. But I want to make sure that we get into this topic. Is, is it that big and of a topic? It is. Okay. So. The topic that I wanted to talk to you about is Naomi Osaka. I had a feeling it was that one. So, Naomi Osaka, for those who don't know, is a tennis superstar, and a heckler brought Osaka to tears and rattled her during a loss at the BNP Paribas Open. A woman in the crowd yelled, Naomi, you suck at Osaka, after she fell behind early in the match. The four-time Grand Slam champion, who has been transparent about her struggles with mental health, began to tear up and was visibly shaken. After the match, Osaka addressed the crowd, saying that the heckling went into her head and got replayed a lot. This incident has rejuvenated the debate around fan conduct and what athletes can or should expect from fans. So, I thought that this was a really good thing for us to talk about because it intersects a lot of the different things that we deal with a lot, like mental health, but also sports and like people's rights. Like if you buy a ticket to something, like what should you do? What can you do? Like what's good? What's bad? Like Not, not to mention the fact that this was a guy yelling at a woman and would he have yelled that at a I, guy? Well, I think that's a fair well they said it was a woman. They said it was a woman who yelled it. Unless she, the no, story later on in there. later on in the article they said it was a guy. So maybe there was multiple there really, things, I don't know. Yeah, because one said that it was a woman who yelled it. Yeah. And then they couldn't find the person. They're like, we don't know who it was. But so like this this is interesting to me because I, there are a lot of people who are like, it's kind of like we talked about with Lucas Ursig last week, where you're like, if somebody comes out and admits their struggles, like there are going to be people who are going to be jerks and like hold that against them. And like, right. I, 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 I struggle with this and I'll tell you all why, why I struggle with this. And then I'm going to let you give your opinions, Kanzi. So I have my personal opinions about athletes, right? Like you and I share opinions. I share opinions with you, loyal listeners, about athletes that I like. But I'm never going to walk up to an athlete that I don't like and be like, dude, you fucking suck. Like, <laughs> might I yell that at my, at Skanzi's giant projector screen while I'm watching? <laughs> Game Redacted. Maybe, but I'm never going to walk up to this guy and be like, dude, you fucking suck. Like, I feel like there's a sense of decorum that is necessary because we're all human beings. Like I can feel some kind of way about how you're performing, but I don't have to tell you that I think you suck. I don't know. What are your thoughts here? I was going to go to the same spot. Like maybe Naomi Osaka sucks. I don't think she does. She's won four grand slams. So she, she doesn't suck, but you know, maybe she sucks. Let's just say she sucks. Like say it on your stupid podcast that 10 people watch, say it in your basement, say it in your living room. Don't, don't say it to somebody, especially, and this is, this is where it comes into the human aspect, especially someone that everybody knows has, has had her struggles with her mental health. 
the fact that she's taken time off to, to take care of her mental health. And now you're just piling this on. So not only does that make you an asshole, it, it, I mean, it just makes you a bigger asshole. Like it just, it's there, it, that's not okay. It's just not okay. And, and uh, I think the, the, the situation we run into is there are far too many people that believe that they have a right to, uh, how do I want to say? Uh, they, 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 in a way, they, they almost own these athletes. And I, I don't know a better way to say that. It's like, well, I'm paying your salary because I'm watching on TV and I'm watching these ads and that's paying your owner who pays you. Or I'm going to the game and I'm buying concessions and that's going to the owner who's paying you or whatever the case may be. And I feel like there's kind of an ownership aspect there um i mean we could add again there's the there's the female aspect there is the um the race aspect on top of that there's there's so many different aspects onto it that i think add into it but the simple fact of the matter is these are just people who are doing their job and yeah mm -hmm. it's a job that's done in front of a whole bunch of people it's a job that generally pays them very very well but it's still their job and i'll tell you what yep. if somebody showed up in my office and decided to yell at me and told me I sucked. First of all, I'm gonna be looking for a new job. And second, I'm gonna be hiding so that the cops don't find me to arrest me for punching <laughs> someone in the fucking face. That's all I'm gonna say. Right. Well, and it's just like the hard part is this this goes back to so much that's going on, especially in our American society today, right? Like people are like, This is my right to be able to do whatever it is that I want. Is technically is there something written in the rules that you can't heckle? Maybe there's not. But does not but does heckling not make you an asshole? No, you're an asshole if you sit there and heckle somebody for no good reason. Like there again, and I think that there's levels of heckling, right? Like outright calling somebody and telling them that they suck, that's a far more aggressive level of heckling than if somebody kicks the ball over the goal and you go nice shot dude right like yeah. you know like it, it's kind of i don't like it's i don't like it i feel like we just need to be kinder to people and our society is getting farther and farther away from being kind no i agree and i think that's i think that's the underlying message right i think that i think that's the that's the main point is is as a society, and God knows that I'm part of that too at times, we, we just aren't as kind to people as we should be, as we need to be. It, it's, it's much easier for, for people to be angry and to be upset um, than it is for people to be kind. It's, uh, it's much easier for someone to say, hey, go fuck yourself, than it is for someone to say, I love you. I care about you. I hope that things are good. For some reason, that's a lot harder for someone to say. And uh, it's a sad yeah. state of affairs when that's the world we live in. Right. And like, and I think that there, and I'm going to bring another piece of nuance in this before we spin again, but I think there's a different piece of nuance. Like we can actively root against the Chicago bears, right? Because we don't like that. Team. Cause they suck. But that doesn't, but that doesn't mean that we have ill will towards those players. Right. Like, I feel like that's another way to distinguish like, okay, like, you can root against Naomi Osaka, but instead of being like, you suck, then just cheer for the other person, right? right? Like, channel your aggression into positivity for something instead of negativity towards someone. Yeah, again, I think the grander message is, how do we as a people get rid of that hate and that vitriol? Like, it's so much a part of so much, so many of the things that we talk about, right? We 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 name drop, you know, <laughs> this is me showing my anger. We we name dropped asshole of all assholes, C Tucker Carlson earlier, right? Like his whole shtick is being an asshole and just being horrible and ugly and terrible to people, and that's kind of the world we're in. Those are the people that rise to the top, and everybody else seems to be getting angry along with it. And uh, it, it, there's no there's no possible way that ends that ends up in a positive way so that was the reason i started this damn podcast to begin with in a lot of ways that's why i started the streaming thing how do we lead hashtag lead with love that's what it's all about nice all right so speaking of leading with love we are at about 40 minutes do we want to do one more top do we want to move to random rankings what is your call we're gonna Mr. do Scott? we're gonna do two more because i told emily we'd take care of one that she wants so we're gonna spin 
And then we're gonna do, oh look, it ended up on Naomi Osaka. So we're gonna spin again. It's probably gonna end up on the one that Emily wants. Uh, we're gonna talk. Uh, we're, what are we talking about? Do we wanna talk about Texas? Um, do you, how mad do you wanna get? I don't wanna get mad. We're, I'm skipping Texas. But this is all we don't need to skip no, Texas. We're our skipping. Friend, our friend cackled. When when you got mad about Texas last time, I literally got a Snapchat that was like, I laughed so hard that I doubled over in my kitchen. <laughs> so your anger makes people happy, Sconzi. <laughs> it's making me fucking miserable. All right. Tell us what we're talking about, B. All right. So. Texas and LGBTQ continued. The Texas Department of Health and Human Services has removed resources for LGBTQ youths from its suicide prevention webpage. On February 1st, the Department of Webpage included a subhead for the Trevor Project, which is the leading national organization providing crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to the LGBTQ young people. The section provided organizers' website, phone number, and text lines. A few days later, on February 5th, was gone of the suicide prevention resources that were there only the trevor project was removed and this is not the first time that texas has removed suicide prevention resources for lgbtq youths from state websites so basically this is texas continuing to stigmatize and ignore the fact that people are in the lgbtq community which, it, it, to me, it sets a very dangerous precedent because, again, we've talked about how representation matters. And if you see these websites and you don't see a resource that represents you, like, that is scary. Now, I'm hopeful that this Trevor Project has their word out in enough places that people would hear about it. But, like, this, again, is just, like, it's a slap in the face to the community. I want to go a step further than a slap in the face. So I'm going to tie in a little bit of the Florida thing here too, because as far as I'm concerned, this Texas bullshit and the Florida bullshit is, it's all the same bullshit by the same bullshit people. So much for not fucking swearing. So here's, I kind of jotted down really quickly, kind of a timeline of stuff. Now this isn't super scientific. This is just out of my own brain, which is, you know, has its own issues. So we've got children, children, who are transgendered. Imagine you're eight years old, you're 10 years old, you're 14 years old. Like, you don't know which way is up. You know, you don't know how to put your fucking underwear on, for God's sake. And now all of a sudden you feel like I'm a girl in a boy's body. That's confusing as hell, right? So these kids are already confused on top of the fact that they're confused just by being kids. On top of the fact that these are kids who are going through puberty and God knows how that screws people up. And now you got this law in Florida that's saying, well, we can't even talk about it. Like, we can't do that. There are laws being passed all over this country where not only, not only can you not talk about it, not only can you not confide in people that you trust and people that you respect, but they're, they're also going to turn around and tell your parents about it. So a lot of these people, let's be honest, there's, there's, there's definitely a, a very strong uh, um, group of people on the right in Texas, certainly not all of them, but there's a, there's a bunch of them. There, a lot of times these kids can't talk to their parents. And so they, they reach out to the people they can talk about. Well, you can't do that anymore. Because of this confusion and all of this, not only is there confusion, but there is bullying. There is a lack of support. I can't talk to my parents. I can't talk to my, my friends. My, my teachers can't talk to me. I can't talk to my fucking guidance counselor. Now you've got kids who are already confused and angry and frustrated, and they see no way out. So now we've got kids that we have pushed towards committing suicide. They can't have supportive parents, even if they do have supportive parents. Let's say it's one of the, the four people in Texas who aren't assholes. They have supportive parents who want to support them. Well, now they got this goddamn law where they're, they're committing child abuse. Now their parents can't be supportive. And then on top of all that, Let's say this kid who is confused, they can't talk to their teachers, they can't talk to their guidance counselors, they can't talk to their parents. Maybe their parents are supportive, but their parents can't do anything to help them because they can't, they can't get medical coverage, they can't go anywhere to do anything because they'll get sued by this stupid law. And so maybe this 12-year-old maybe this kid
kid is 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 able on on somehow in their last attempt they go to this resource to try to find a way to get some help now we're going to take away that too like why don't we just put up led fucking lights with an an arrow pointing to the nearest gun shop and and make it easier like what the fuck are we doing here b like this i cannot put into words how much this fucking bothers me like we're it's bad enough that we're hating people for being who they are but now we are just pushing kids into this ungodly direction because people are so goddamn hateful. I, I don't know what else to say, man. This, this, is, this is beyond infuriating. Like anybody that has even the slightest hand in this, anybody who doesn't raise a hand and scream from the mountaintops that they are against this, as far as I'm concerned, you're supporting it. Every goddamn one of you can go to hell. Every goddamn one of you. I'm done because so now I'm getting tears in my, my eye. You, 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 you kind of stole my extra point. So I may as well just read what I had for my extra point. So there was a um, article from a relative that I know in Eau Claire who they know a individual who identifies as gay who wrote about their experience, you know, as a student and then coming out as an adult. And one of the things that they talked a lot about was safe spaces in schools. And one of the things that they said that I thought was really powerful is to anyone demanding that they be told and are putting their need for knowledge over the comfort and safety of their children need to stop and ask some serious questions of themselves. Because that's really what this is all coming to, right? Like, it's always about, oh, parents need to be told, parents need to be told. And one of the things that, you know, this individual said on their post was that, yes, I understand that a parent might be hurt by the fact that they aren't the first one that I want to tell about how I feel and who I am. But if they're my parent and if they love me, they need to respect that. Like, isn't that generally what, like, the, the gold standard of teaching is for, like, you know, communication? Like, it, it's just, like, you got, like, you were so good, and then you got angry, and now I've brought it to this place. But I think it's so important to really understand that we are stripping our children and our adults of their safe spaces. Yep, I agree. All right, let's move on. God. Oh, we can't. I have to, we have to talk about Jennifer Gardner because Emily Emily wanted to talk about that. This so, is a good story, this, though. This is good a good story. story. This is a good story. Tell us why Jennifer Gardner is on the wheel. Emily is very very concerned about Emily Gardner. Oh, oh well, Emily. Well, you will be happy to know that Jennifer Gardner is back in the spotlight for sharing a simple way to provide a random act of kindness using Ziploc bags to give back to those in need. Garner made a post advocating for filling up a bag with essential items such as socks, Kleenex, hand wipes, disposable toothbrushes, chapstick, granola bars, and a few dollars. Garner also advocated that the bags have feminine hygiene products. You can keep these bags in your vehicle, and when you see someone in need or who's asking for food or money, you can provide them a bag with a smile. I thought that this was a really cool idea because a lot of times, at least here in City Redacted, we will see people like in the medians, you know, asking for food or for money or whatever. And they have the signs and like, it's always this like very awkward interaction. Like if you're stopped and they're stopped and like, they look at you and you look at them, but like, it'd be kind of cool to like have this in your car and just be able to like roll down the window and like, Hey, or, you know, even like as a drive by Frisbee, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> don't throw it at like, people. It's, but, like, no, I'm thinking, like, if you're in the turn lane and, like, you got to turn, but, like, they're in the median where, like, you can't get to them. Brian's out so. here pretending he's in a parade every day. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a but, great idea. Like, I think a lot of people want to be able to do things to help. And uh, admittedly, I think a lot of people want to be able to do things to help. They want to do it in the most convenient way for them, which I get. 
Um, but this is a super convenient way that you can still help, right? Like, like all you're doing is. is you're spending a couple dollars, you're putting a couple of kits together, you're keeping them in your car, which, and, and if the opportunity comes up, act on it. Like, I, I think it's a very yeah. cool idea. Yeah. Cool. So I'm glad that we ended with that one. See, we went from, we went the full gambit of emotions and now we are going to move to random rankings. So, there's a new story that we might be able to tell about this next week, but for now, <laughs> we are going to talk about the best things to do with the extra hour of daylight from daylight savings time. So, we are just going to make a random list of things, you chat and loyal listener, tell us which activities you like, which activities you don't like, and we're not going to tell you how we actually spent that extra hour today, you know, sitting in traffic and then shoveling food in our face so that we could be on this podcast. But, but, what you got for me, Sconzi, what is your number one activity that you're going to do now that you got an extra hour of sunlight in your life? You know, I, I'm going to kind of try to put a list up here, um, but but Drive is acting weird. Somebody turned on uh, track changes, apparently, which is really stupid. But that's okay. I'm going to shift over to this guy anyway, and hopefully it's going to pop up. There it is. So I'm going to put number one. Uh, I don't even have anything for this. Like, I legit got nothing. Like, I don't, I don't care if it's dark out or not. I'm going to do the same stuff if it's dark than I do when it's not dark. Okay, well, do you want me to go? Sure. You tell us what you want to do, B. All right, so I am going to select an item that I know that you might draft versus drafting the actual item. Like, the item that I'm going to draft would be like an undrafted free agent for you. So I don't have to draft that one right away. But okay. I I am going to draft a patio happy hour. So oh, okay. who doesn't like to be on the patio as the sun is setting with some food and some drink and some good old company? We're talking about my patio because I'm okay with that. I can do that. No, um, I wasn't designating the patio. Oh, well, I, I, I'm no. okay staying on my patio. Uh, <laughs> I think that the more that I'm getting angry at stuff, I'm going to have to spend that extra hour on my computer in therapy because that's pretty much where I'm heading right now. Uh, not to turn things right. dark or anything. Uh, but uh, okay. obviously I'm going to smoke cigars, Like, but I do that anyway, so it's not really a big deal okay. if it's dark or if it's not dark. Like, I can't really think of too many things that I would do. Like, I want to get outside and walk some. I guess that's, Oh, you stole it! No! I guess, Don't do it! I guess that's better to do in the daylight than in the dark, but, like, mow my lawn, but I don't really do that. I pay some dude to do that. Uh, I was totally going to draft wa taking a walk, but I thought that that was going to be the undrafted free agent. See? I, I okay. Like, honestly, oh. most of what I do is, it, it doesn't matter if it's light or dark out, so I don't know. Well, and like, so I, I, the way that I looked at this was there are things that it's a lot more pleasurable to do when it's light outside, right? So patio happy hour, like it's a lot better to sit on a patio, like when the sun's out and That's it's right. nice, you know, it's a lot more entertaining to walk. It's a lot better. Like if you have to go outside and garden or weed or like do household projects or whatever, right? Like, it's a lot better to do that stuff when it's light outside. Like, you know, you can get lots of random stuff done. Like, you, you know, I, I, I just enjoy having this extra hour of light because you could take a evening drive. Like, why are you going to go take an evening drive if it's, like, dark outside? But if, again, the sun is setting, you can go hit the back roads and just open the windows knock them down you don't have mosquitoes you know through your car <laughs> it's fair right it's fair so brian is going to go driving seems like a good idea we're gonna put that on it there is. i'm gonna i'm gonna say Wait, that so, so here, here's the question would you rather me drive in the light or in the dark <laughs> well here's my answer does it does it does it matter? Like, I would say yes. I mean, 
I mean, I'm not going to ride you with know. you either way. You can drive in the day or the night. I'm not in that car. That's all I know. I'm going to make sure I know when it's happening, and I am going to be in my house. I'm going to be in the center of my house. Just in case you hit my house, I should still be safe. I'm going to be like in the basement. That's what You're I'm going to go in the murder room? Murder room, yeah. I think I'm going to use the extra hour to get a suntan, because that's definitely something that's easier to do in the light than in the dark. That's fair. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I, I, I just mean... you know, like the whole the whole daylight savings thing. It just it doesn't it doesn't really get to me. Like people are freaking out. They're like, "Oh my god, I can't sleep, and my sleep schedule's on," which is fine. I'm not making fun. If that impacts you, that's that's great. I'm well, it's not great, but I get it. That that's okay. It just, it just doesn't impact me. The fact that there's an extra hour of sunlight doesn't generally impact me too much, right? Um, I mean, I guess maybe on days off, there, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of extra sun. But again, to my point, I would be outside if I wanted to be outside anyway. It does I don't know. I'm just weird. I'm making things difficult, I guess. But I just, I don't, I don't know. If there's a lot that jumps out at me. All right. Well, we can then wrap this up. We'll move on to our extra points and wrap her up for the week. All right. So get her done, B. As I alluded to during our Texas topic, my topic this week was going to be about safe spaces in schools. But now that I've done that, I need to move on to a new topic. So we will move on to the topic that I started the podcast with. So the Hey Yo is a tribute to former wrestler Scott Hall, who passed away recently. And... You know, as someone who grew up in the 90s and 2000s and even like the late 80s watching wrestling, Scott Hall was someone who I watched a lot of and dude had lots of struggles in his life. And like what really kind of sucks is that over the past, you know, decade, he has really been trying to get his life together and now he's gone. But, you know, what it reminded me of is we get one damn crack at this thing. So we got to keep it moving. We got to do the best we can every day to appreciate every day because the next day ain't guaranteed. So I just want to tell you all that I appreciate you. Thank you for putting up with us and take your flowers when you can get them because we want to give them to you. All right. Get your flowers from B. Uh, I just want to point out that all three of the cameras that have me on them are all in different positions. So I got to fix that. Um, I I didn't have an extra point and uh, I am frankly emotionally drained from that damn texas topic so i am just going to very simply say um we all need to be kinder to one another i think it's that simple i i certainly need to be kinder to people because i'm not always great uh, with that and uh the world has so much ugly in it uh, I'm going to cue old man Wiggum to put the quote in chat because I know that he's going to because every time I get on one of these topics, it shows up. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is is that the world needs more love. It's just that simple. And, um, you know, if if I don't give it, who will? I don't know. So that's where I'm at. And, and I hope you guys are there too. Uh, I suspect if you're here listening to us, then you must uh, care about that a little bit. Otherwise, you probably get sick of us uh, talking about it all the time. But... Uh, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm looking to spread love as much as I can, and however I can, and trying to cut down all the anger that I have, and just focus on love. And I hope that all of you do too. And that's what I got, B. All right. Well, now that you have heard us, not get we didn't get too angry this week. Like the anger that we had, I feel like was channeled and focused, and we brought it back to a good place of hitting 220. So I think <laughs> we're good to go. So. You can find Skonzi on YouTube. He's got his nice new fancy link for Skonzi, so check that out. You can find him on Twitter at Skonzi. You can find me on Twitter at LandmarkMKE. You can find the podcast AQ underscore P-R-O-D. I will not be here next week because I have to make sure that I pay the IRS man my taxes. So <laughs> stay tuned to that Discord of Skonzi's for details of what will be happening next Tuesday. Or if I have given Skonzi a well-deserved day off because it sounds like things are very hectic. But if you have comments, concerns, words of wisdom for us, or if you just want to send us some love, 
please hit us up on those socials. We appreciate hearing from you. You can also rate this in your podcast app. I don't even know if we have any ratings because we've never <laughs> asked for them. That's a good point. That seems weird. We should but look for that. In any case, we love you. Thank you. Have a good week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.